Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to provide you guys another idea you could probably do at home. We're going to be working on our sneaker photography today. Nice. <laughs> so if you hadn't already noticed, I am a little bit of a hype beast. I love my sneakers. Comment down below if you are a sneakerhead as well. Your top three sneakers, we'd love to hear what it is. And if you're not a sneakerhead, don't worry about it. I'm not going to be going into the cuts of like the whole culture behind it. We're just going to be working on our product photography today to kind of spruce up our portfolio. So I have two pairs of shoes with me today. The Yeezy 700 Wave Runners and the Nike Zoom Fly SP. I just want to preface that both of these sneakers are worn already so you'll see some creases and some dirt marks and I think that could be encouraging for most of you because not everybody has clean unworn shoes just lying around the house. So I don't want you to think that you have to have that in order to have good product photography. If anything, it just adds character to the shoe. So before we jump into the photo shoot for these shoes, I just want to provide some tips for you guys in your product photography. Quick tip number one is try to refrain from shooting wide open. I have an f1.4 lens, but I shouldn't always be shooting f1.4. That depth of field is too shallow. For most product photography, you want to aim towards f4 to f8 because you want to show the details of the product. People want to buy the product because they love the details, not because they can see shallow depth of field. Tip number Number two is because you're not shooting wide open, you're going to need a whole lot of light. So use external lights, use studio lights if you have any. Put your camera on a tripod so you can slow down the shutter speed to let in more light, crank up that ISO, whatever you need to do. You're going to need a whole lot of light because again, you're not going to be shooting at f1.4. Quick tip number three is do your research on the brand itself. What do they represent? How do they shoot their products? What kind of colors do they use? What kind of ethos do they represent? So I think that's all the quick tips I can provide for you guys right now. I'll maybe provide some more tips like along the way. So let's go on ahead and shoot the Nikes first. So first up, we have the Nike Zoom Fly SP in neutral indigo. So obviously the shoe is more on the performance side of Nike as opposed to the lifestyle branch. So it's important to highlight the details and the features of the tech that they put into this shoe. One thing is for certain that one of Nike's priority in their performance is to make it lightweight. So one of the lightweight things that I'm going to highlight is actually the tech that they put into the upper construction and it's even see-through. So I'll probably shine a light through that to highlight it, literally. I have a couple ideas of how I'm going to exemplify the air mantra that Nike has had since the beginning of its brand. So I'll incorporate all this against a nice pop color backdrop because Nike is known for its pop color obviously as you can tell and i'll throw on another couple nike pieces to assemble an outfit that could further complement the running culture that the shoe represents i think it's really important to capture the feelings that a brand evokes because customers want to emotionally relate to a product and that's why nike has invested in like athletes to create some storytelling designs so that the customers can feel like they're connected with the athlete that wears it same thing for any brand whether it's adidas or nike or even like any food product you want to capture the ethos, which is just a fancy word for emotions. And if you do a good job in capturing a commercial ad for the product, then your customers will be emotionally invested in it. It really takes a lot of practice and research to capture the ethos of a brand, but it's even easier and I highly recommend that you shoot for a brand that you truly believe in. Because if you're emotionally invested in the product, then it's kind of like taking a portrait of a friend. Because what Nike represents is kind of like a friend to me, so it makes it that much more easier and more interesting too. So let's get into it. All right, so this is the setup that we got going on right now. We got a little baby blue foam board against another blue backdrop. Funny thing about this is that I used tape on this board before and I ripped a piece of it off. So I'm just gonna hide that there. There we go. You could always pick up these foam boards at a local art store if they're open. And one thing that I do want to uh, emphasize is that if you are going to be using like a lot of like set pieces or like vibrant colors like this, make sure that there's no competition happening because it would be really counterintuitive and really counterproductive if like say you use like red color or whatever or whatever like prop piece that you have and it kind of competes for the intention of the viewer because if your viewer gets distracted like at least for like one second away from the product then they already lose interest in it you could be surprised by how fast like psychology can change by whatever set piece you use. Uh, I just want to preface also that I'm not a professional, like like seasoned uh, product photographer. So this is just stuff that I've learned so far. You could take it like a grain of salt. You could comment down below on what you think about it. So yeah, this is what we got going on. We're going to take a couple stills of this first, and then we're going to add some prop pieces. Oh, 
for those of you who can stand on a spinning chair without spinning, you guys have incredible core strength. So right now I'm gonna start taking photos of the details like the tongue and uh, some other like imprints that they have on the heel. I think it's really important to like grab those tiny details because it's there for a reason to tell a story. So right now I'm trying to set up a shot to photograph the tongue. There's a little pinwheel logo that Nike did uh, for the specific shoe and for their performance models moving forward, I guess like for the running concept. But like right now, like I'm trying to perfect like just a balanced centered composition. I think in product photography, it could take a long time to take one shot. And a problem I'm facing right now is that there's a lot of glare on the tongue. So I'm gonna try to try to hover my hand so that it doesn't shine on the thing. All right, so I think we nailed all the necessary details of the shoe, but now we're running into the unique challenge of highlighting the see-through material. I mean, I could like run this light right next to it, but I'm trying to find an elegant way to do it. All right, so this is pretty sick. I just ended up throwing the lights in the shoe, and I think if I turn off the light, oh, that is so dope. Holy crap, yo, that's really tight. That came out way better than I thought. Alright, because the idea works so well, I still left one in the shoe, but I'm going to leave one right in between the pair so I can have a little bit of a light tunnel right here. See how sick that shot is? This is really fun. I cannot plug this light enough. Like, the Aperture... Whoop. The Aperture MC is a lifesaver. You could use this in anything. A wedding, Obviously a product shoot. Guys, you need to get your hands on that. Our last of the lone solo product shots is, um, I kind of got some cotton balls and like kind of made like little fluffy clouds like Bob Ross around the shoe to kind of uh, attach the shoe to the ethos of uh, lightness and uh, lightweight and Nike Air. And the cotton balls originally looked like that, like little nuggets, and then I pulled them apart. So when I asked my mom for some cotton, like she gave me some of these, like in some tiny Ziploc bags, and she said, oh, you better put them back. And now looking at this, and then looking at that, I do not think I could roll it back up like this. So sorry, mom, I'll just buy some more when art stores open up again. All right, so now onto the Yeezys. Now this brand has a more subdued earth tone, moody look, as opposed to Nike's pop color look. So all the stuff that I did for Nike, like the clouds and the air, that wouldn't really match the brand of the shoe. So we're going to throw this sneaker against like a lot of earth tone stuff, like maybe a lot of boxes around it and uh, throw it up against this black backdrop to kind of match that mood. Another thing about the Yeezy brand is that they just don't focus on the shoe. They actually focus more on the lookbook. So more of their like outfits and the whole ensemble being one unit together. And since I have a very limited space, like in my room, uh, I can't shoot that. So I promise you that once I'm like able to go out again and shoot comfortably and safely, I will do a lookbook video along with some Nikes, but this will go first. So without further ado, Let's get on to the Yeezys. Oh, and if anybody is wondering, I've been shooting on the 35 millimeter this entire time on the EOS R.
All right, so we got a lot of boxes here to kind of add to that earth tone that I was talking about. Um, you might be wondering, like, why am I including the box so much in all the photos? In the Easy lineup, each model has their own box. So, like, there's 700, there's 750, there's 350, there's 500, and so on and so forth. So it kind of adds to the storytelling of the shoe itself compared to like the typical orange box that Nikes come in, especially the zoom flies that I just uh, shot. And having that box along with all these other miscellaneous ones, like kind of adds to the motif of the earth tone, subdued, moody look. Another thing to add about the brand is that it really aims for a high fashion look. So the weirder it looks kind of like this, this is not even that weird, but the weirder it looks, the more high fashion it is that's what kind of what kanye goes for compared to like nike which is like more fun and lighthearted stuff so the more high fashion it is the more on brand it is that comes up in your research for whatever kind of brand you choose to shoot All right, for the final setup, I grabbed some brown packaging paper that I found around the house, and I'm just adding it so that there's more of a flowy component to it because everything is so geometric, right? Because the boxes like really sharp corners. So I think this will add a nice contrast of like a more like fluid look. So yeah, we're just gonna play around with this. I have another sheet of brown paper to mess with, and yeah, these are made well boxes, so I have to make sure that, you know, they're covered up and that they're not distracting from the whole Yeezy brand. Alright, so that's all I'm going to do for the Yeezys today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that kind of high fashion shoot. I do want to focus more on a lookbook type photo set, so when I can, I will provide that video for you guys, kind of like a part two of this video. But uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can create something like really creative, even better than me, like back at your place, because these videos are aimed to teach you guys and share my knowledge so that you guys can one day be better than me. I don't want you guys to be like me, I want you guys to be better than me. So tag me at Who's Chris Shoe on Instagram if you plan to do these at home. Well, that's all I have for you guys for this video. Hey, if you made it to this point, here's my special announcement. I will be selling prints now. So down in the description box below, I have a link and there's a few selection of film photos and digital photos that you guys can purchase. And make sure that depending on the format you get, like 8x10 or 11x14, there is a certain crop on some of them. So pay extra attention to that so that you don't miss out on a part of the photo that you thought you were going to get. And the reason why I'm selling prints is that California is going through an extended shelter in place because of COVID-19. And I haven't been able to book any gigs, which means no income is coming my way. So this is one way that you can support me if you want some wall art or if you just want to solely support this channel. I greatly appreciate it, but there is no pressure. For the first three days, I'm gonna be having a 40% off sale. Um, use the code, uh, I'm gonna come up with something on the spot. Um, uh, let's use the code, banana boat band. Yeah, banana boat band. That is the code for 40% off, only for the first three days. So it'll, it'll be running until like, uh, let's just do Sunday at midnight or whatever. I'll make an announcement if I do wanna extend it. So 40% off, banana boat bands. Down in the description box below, I'm selling prints. So thank you guys for watching this video. Hit that subscribe button and like the video and comment down below, what's your favorite sneaker? Or what's your favorite shot of the whole entire video? Thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you guys and girls are staying safe and I will see you in the next video. Peace.